Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech. In today's video, we will do a full comparison between the iPhone 6S Plus versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, two of the most popular phablets on the market right now. A lot of people are asking questions like, which one is better, or shall I get the 6S Plus or the Note 5, or shall I switch from one to the other? And in this video, we will tackle those questions directly. Now, just to give you a perspective, the Note 5 was released in August 2015, and a month later, on September 2015, the iPhone 6S Plus surfaced. So let's dive in and do a comprehensive comparison and see if we can choose a winner or perhaps see if we have a draw. Let's start off with the build and design. Now, first of all, let's clear one thing. Both of these phones have a premium build quality and a gorgeous design. Now, let's take a look at each in succession. The iPhone 6S is crafted using aircraft grade 7000 aluminum series, which is packed in a gorgeous unibody design. It's a sleek and seamless design with a continuous form factor. On the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 is crafted out of metal and glass. The frame surrounding the edges of the device is all magnesium alloy, whereas the front and back panel of the device are built using Corning Gorilla Glass 4, which is one tough piece of glass with best-in-class durability. There is no question that whether you hold the Note 5 or the iPhone 6S Plus in your hands, you get a solid sensation of holding a premium device with a magnificent build quality. Now, neither aluminum or gloss offers any grip so you'll be constantly scared that these phones could just glide out of your hands and shatter to a thousand pieces. Therefore, I highly recommend some sort of case or a protective sleeve. Some case suggestions are below in the description. Now, which one is the winner? I personally prefer the design of the Note 5, and that is a subjective choice. Therefore, the choice of design preference will be based on your own subjective desires. So that means, in this department, you get to pick your own personal winner. Do drop a comment below stating your preference. Now let's move on to the processor, memory, and storage options. So the Note 5 comes with an Exynos 7420 octa-core processor. Octa stands for eight. So we have eight total processing cores. Four of these cores are clocked at 2.1 gigahertz and the other four are clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. We get four gigabytes of RAM and the base model of the Note 5 starts at 32 gigabytes of storage, but you can upgrade to 64 gigabytes for a max. Now the iPhone 6S Plus comes with the new Apple A9 chip, which is a 64-bit dual-core chip clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. We get two gigabytes of RAM, and the base model of the iPhone 6S Plus starts at 16 gigabytes of storage, but you can upgrade to 64 gigs or even 128 gigs based on your storage needs. Now, these are both flagship devices and offer lots of power. So towards the end of this video, I will do a processor and memory benchmark to see which one produces more processing power. For now, however, let's move on to the screen size and resolution. The iPhone 6S Plus comes with a 5.5 inch IPS LCD screen with 1920 by 1080 pixels of resolution, which brings the pixels per inches to 401. The Note 5 has a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED screen with a Quad HD display, which is 1440 by 2560 pixels with 518 pixels per inches. Now, due to the higher resolution and higher PPI, the text, images, and videos will be crisper and sharper on the Note 5 especially when you're dealing with high-resolution media such as photos and videos. It should be made clear that the iPhone 6S Plus display is still a world-class display with rich, accurate, vibrant colors and deep contrast. But the Note 5, in addition to having those properties, also has observably better crispness and sharpness that becomes possible due to its Quad HD resolution. The wind goes directly to the Note 5, but you're welcome to challenge that in the comments below. That being said, I wouldn't let the screen all by itself decide the better phone. Remember, the iPhone 6S Plus still has a gorgeous display, but the Note 5 is simply better. Let's move on to the dimensions and weight. All right, so the iPhone 6S Plus is 158.2 millimeters in height. It is 77.9 millimeters wide and only 7.3 millimeters thick and weighs 192 grams. On the other hand, the Note 5 measures 153.2 millimeters in height, 76.1 millimeters wide, and 7.6 millimeters 
thick. It only weighs 171 grams. A simple look at the numbers shows you that the Note 5 has more favorable numbers. However, the 6S Plus is in fact thinner while the Note 5 is lighter. Is this a big deal? Not at all. This is just another category that shouldn't make a huge difference in making a buying choice. Let's move on to the software. Now this is a huge category and it does matter. So let's go into some healthy amount of detail. The Note 5 comes with the latest version of Android running the Samsung TouchWiz overlay, whereas the iPhone 6S Plus comes with the latest version of iOS. The difference between Android and iOS can be divided into three categories in relation to these two phones. Number one, customization capabilities. This is a field where the Note 5 will take the win because you can fully customize this phone and personalize it to fit your personal sense of style. You can add some spice to your home screens using live widgets such as calendars, clocks, weather, news feeds, and also create color themed folders. You can even download and install custom themes from a theme market and your phone will look like a different device altogether. Unfortunately, none of this is possible on the iPhone. All you can do is change the wallpaper for the lock and the home screens and you get a static grid of app icons on each home screen with the ability to create folders. Number two, app ecosystem. Now although both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store have millions of apps available for download, the quality of apps and games that come from the Apple App Store is simply better. But let's just be clear. Of course, Google Play Store has some really amazing apps and games, but when you compare the quality ratio, Apple App Store wins by having a higher number of quality apps and games period. Therefore, if you're an app-only person that isn't concerned about customization features, and if you're an avid mobile gamer, then the iPhone will be a better choice. Number three. Now, this is a newly forged category because it has to do with new features that were not present on iPhones before the 6S lineup, namely the 3D Touch. I'm going to pit 3D Touch against the S Pen, not to compare, but to show you the highlights in these two unique phone specific features. So the S Pen is a unique tool devised for the Note 5 that allows you to transform your cell phone into a precise note taking and sketching device. This isn't just some stylus, it's an actual pen with an incredibly sensitive tip which if you wanted to could be used to draw a masterpiece as long as you have the patience for it. So that's what the S Pen gets you and it is a critical feature in the Note 5. As for 3D touch, what you get is a pressure sensitive screen that can sense how firmly you are pressing on the screen. Based on the force with which you press, it will offer you two basic functions, peak and pop. You press lightly to peek into content to get previews and you press firmly to pop into the full content that you just previewed. Now you can do much more than what I just told you. I will leave some links in the description with links to videos that cover the S Pen and the 3D Touch, so go check those if you want to learn more. Unfortunately, it would take forever to cover the full details in this video, so make sure to check those videos out for more exciting details on the S Pen and the 3D Touch. And finally, I'm also going to throw in the fact that the Note 5 does allow you to do split screen multitasking which means you can have two apps running side by side at the same time, which is a great software tool that the iPhone 6S Plus lacks. Let's move on to another major feature, the camera. The cameras on both these phones are absolutely fantastic. The Samsung Galaxy Note 5 comes with a 16 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f1.9 on the rear, whereas the iPhone 6S Plus comes with a 12 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.2. Both cameras feature optical image stabilization, which allows for superb low light performance. As far as picture quality goes, you will get phenomenal quality with either phone, and there really is no need to sit down and scientifically analyze each little pixel, because the final results that get snapped look gorgeous on both phones with accurate colors, rich, sharp, and crispy details. As for video recording, both the 6S Plus and the Note 5 can record 4K video at 30 frames per second and 1080p at either 30 or 60 frames per second. We also have some slow motion capabilities. With the 6S Plus, you can do 240 frames per second 
at 720p as well as a new mode where you can do 1080p at 120 frames per second, which is amazing. Note 5 only allows for slow motion at 720p at 120 frames per second. We also have front facing cameras at 5 megapixels on both the 6S Plus and the Note 5 so expect similar quality on each. And finally, the iPhone 6S Plus will offer a new concept called Live Photos. This option is enabled by default when you launch the camera app and all you have to do is take a photo as usual by tapping the shutter. What is going to happen is the camera will capture 1.5 seconds before and after the photo which will transform the regular photo into a live photo that is going to include motion and sound. Whether or not live photos makes the iPhone camera better is up for debate. I personally don't care too much about the feature even though I'm sure I will be playing around with it. However, to some people it may appear magical and very interesting. Again, I'm content with a camera that takes high quality pictures and both the 6S and the Note 5 do that and therefore you can't really go wrong with either. And that's it for the camera. Let's move on to the battery. Samsung Galaxy Note 5 has a battery capacity of 3000 mAh whereas the iPhone 6S Plus has a battery capacity of 2715 mAh. Both these phones have non-removable batteries that will last you a full day of use with medium to heavy use, by which I mean a healthy mixture of texting, browsing the web, talking on the phone, listening to music, and perhaps an hour or two of video watching and gaming. Now if you do mad gaming like 4 to 5 hours a day and watch a lot of videos, of course the battery is not going to last. Now there are times when you will have little battery life left and there will be no charger within range. And this is when you will utilize the low power mode on the iPhone 6S Plus and the ultra power savings mode on the Note 5. Both these options will allow you to extend battery life until you find a charger. The low power mode shuts off background data underclocks the processor and kills some visual effects to save battery. While the ultra power savings mode simply transforms the Note 5 into a bare bone device. The screen goes black and white and the Note 5 turns into a basic texting and calling device. You won't be able to watch videos or play games at all. Ultra power savings mode is a pretty advanced feature and extends the battery life longer than the low power mode on the iPhone 6S Plus. Also, a feature that the iPhone lacks is wireless charging. Note 5 allows for wireless charging and it even offers a fast wireless charging which can fully charge your Note 5 in two hours, which is fantastic. No cables, no clutter, and fast wireless charging. Now let's move on to the various color options. Both phones can be acquired in four different colors. The iPhone 6S Plus can be purchased in silver, gold, space gray, or rose gold. Options on the Note 5 include silver, gold, black, and white. Next up, the fingerprint sensor. Now not much to say here other than the fact that both of these phones have a fingerprint sensor and they both work flawlessly and quickly. iPhone is slightly faster to recognize and unlock your phone using your fingerprint, perhaps by a few microseconds. But the success rate for both these smartphones is almost 100%, which is what we want. So let's move on to the benchmarks. Let's see which one of these phones will produce more power. We will be using the Geekbench benchmarking tool to measure performance. Geekbench uses real life scenarios to stress test cross platform devices. So the results do give you a good idea of overall output in power. So let's dive in and see which one is the winner. So as you guys saw, I cleared all the background processes and I launched Geekbench on each device and I ran the program. So let's uh, fast forward to the end and see which phone is faster. So there we have it. The single core performance on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 is 1483, uh, which is less than the iPhone 6S Plus, which is 2497. So there is a significant difference in the single core performance. Uh, but the multi-core performance, the Note 5 beats the iPhone 6S Plus. You get 4653 on the Note 5 and 4382 on the 6s plus now do remember the iphone 6s plus only has two cores so we do have very powerful cores even though there are only two of them overall i would say that these phones are pretty damn fast and finally the conclusion so what is it what is the conclusion 
We have in our hands two rock-solid phones with beautiful design, powerful processors, best-in-class cameras, and unique features such as the S Pen for the Note 5 and the 3D Touch for the iPhone 6S Plus. So how do you make a choice on which one to buy? Now, first of all, if you're an Apple person, I think you should stick with Apple. However, if you have been feeling rather bored and enticed by the customization and personalization abilities of Android phones, then the Note 5 is simply the best Android phone you can choose to switch to, especially since you also get that beautiful quad HD display and the S Pen functionality. On the other hand, if you're an Android guy and have been enticed by the 3D Touch as well as the rock solid app ecosystem that Apple offers, I'd give it a try. The 6S Plus obviously is the most powerful and feature packed iPhone to date, and it would be the perfect phone to switch to from Android to get a full taste of Apple. But that's all I can tell you. I'm neutral in this war between the Note 5 and the iPhone 6S Plus as I can see myself using either one of these phones at a given time as a primary cell phone. Just remember this. If you're an Apple person, stick with Apple. If you're an Android person, stick with Android. However, if you're on the fence about switching from Apple to Android, Note 5 is the best thing you can switch to to get a full blunt force of Android prowess. Similarly, if you currently sport an Android phone and looking for a change, iPhone 6S Plus will give you a full dose of what Apple offers. If you do not have any allegiances to either brand and are truly at a loss on which one to choose, then watch the video again and try writing down the features you like most and go with the phone that meets your needs. And that's it. Make sure to drop your comments, opinions, and questions below. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. As always, follow me on Twitter and Facebook for updates. And have a great day. CS6 Edge and being joined recently by the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium. Both boast supersized displays, eye popping resolution, and a whole heap of power. Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, giving us those beautiful dual curved screens on a 5.7 inch display. Samsung's excellent Super AMOLED technology, which really does make it pop, and a QHD resolution of 1440x2560 it's difficult to see how it can be bested. Enter then, the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium. It's the big brother to Sony's new Xperia Z5 flagship, but with an enticing twist. While the Z5 has a 5.2-inch, Full HD panel the Z5 Premium kicks things into overdrive. At 5.5 inches the screen on the Z5 Premium is a touch smaller than the S6 Edge Plus, but its 4K resolution makes it the first smartphone in the world to rock the 3840x2160 stats. Sony Xperia Z5 Premium packs the temperamental Snapdragon 810 processor which has reportedly been overheating in some HTC One M9 and Sony Xperia Z3 Plus handsets. Fingers crossed it's more stable here. Samsung has packed the S6 Edge and full of power with its own octa-core Exynos 7420 processor and a hearty 4GB of RAM. That means it'll be able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it with ease. Sony Xperia Z5 Permium has octa-core chip is 3GB of RAM, and together that provides more than enough power, while the microSD flap allows you to build on the 3-2GB of storage by a whopping 200GB. The Sony Xperia Z5 Premium packs a 2-3MP Exmor R's rear-facing sensor which sits flush to the rear of the phone. It's a wide-angle lens with HDR, steady shot, superior auto, and the ability to record 4K videos, which you can then watch back at full resolution on its 4K display. Front you'll find a 5MP snapper, again an Exmor R lens from Sony's camera department, which can record 1080p video and a wide-angle lens so you can fit more mates in your selfies. The 16MP offering on the Galaxy S6 Edge and may not look like it's in the same league on paper, but this is the same unit that was in the Galaxy S6 and it's a corker. There's another 5MP selfie cam on the front, so video chats and selfies should look splendid. Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge and comes with a 3000mAh battery. 
It's not the largest around but it's acceptable and the addition of wireless charging means it's easier to top up. It also has fast charging, allowing you to get a slug of charge after just a few minutes. There's a bigger 3430mAh battery in the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, but it's having to power a 4K display which will be very hungry. There's no wireless charging but there is a stamina mode to help you eke the last drops from it when you're running low. Hey up everyone, I'm back again. So uh, it's time here to do a quick little speed test between the HEC 1M9 on uh, Sense 7 versus the uh, iPhone 6 Plus on iOS 8.2 to see which is a faster device let's go so we're expecting good things here from the M9 as heated up quite a bit though from the last video I did it's still warm which is quite weird still can't beat the iPhone when it comes to the boot up as I expected so as you can see here we have the Sense 7 UI with the uh, very nice lollipop uh, underlying it uh, so uh, we can start off just uh, doing a quick little speed test here open up some apps M8 did very well on this test so good start here from the M9 again a little bit quicker there We're still waiting. There we go. So a lot quicker there on the M9. Uh, about Tinder. About the same. What's that? A lot quicker there on the M9, doing very well here. Again, M9. Uh, what else we got? What's it doing there? Is it updating? YouTube so we're quicker here on the iPhone and uh, we'll just do the Amazon again before you start moaning about it not being the most up-to-date uh, version of it so uh, go So uh, I think the iPhone is a bit quicker there on that one, so maybe it did help a little bit. What about the uh, dialer? Can we see the dialer? Can't see it here. Where is it? Oh, it's in productivity. That's really weird. Why would you put that there? iPhone again. Uh, what about the uh, clock? There we go. 
again looks like the iPhone I think so uh, I think uh, quite a mixed bag there I think the M9 was a bit stronger overall though so I'm going to give it to the M9 just try the web browsing here and try phone arena goal so I think that was the M9 again but the iPhone wasn't far behind iPhone this time WhatsApp bringing calling to Windows Phone very nice about time they start paying attention to the platform uh, Tech Radar about the same uh, Kotaku I think the iPhone again is getting away with it here. So uh, I think I'm going to give it to the iPhone for the browsing, which is nice, and uh, can just do a little bit of multitasking as well. This is going to drive me mad. Uh, Amazon. Ooh, reload there. Don't like to see that on a 3 gig of uh, DDR4 RAM. YouTube. Again, reload. Viber. No reload there, finally. Group on. Both of them reloaded. See, sometimes the iPhone can be quite sly on this test and wait until I'm off the screen to reload. Uh, Tinder. negligible uh, what else we got eBay all oh, reload here I think it's quite negligible there but I did see more reloading on the uh, one M9 so I'm going to give it to the iPhone for that uh, we can just uh, do a quick little speed test here. Check that they're both on the same server. Both on Leicester. And off we go. So HTC One M9 straight in there, very nice ping and uh, very nice download speeds here. And it's dominated for the upload, which is good. We'll give the iPhone one more chance to redeem itself and redeem itself it looks like it's going to maybe 
all know. <laughs> that was quite uh, close there for the download. It seemed that uh, it was going to redeem itself, but it didn't. So worse for the ping, worse for the download, and worse for the upload. I think the M9 is the undisputed champion here on the Wi-Fi, which is nice. And uh, we can round off the video with a quick and two two on both of them to see uh, which one looks better. Obviously, it is cross-platform, so I'm not going to compare them kind of side by side. And here we go again with this annoying 64-bit uh, issue. So we should come out of it here. And uh, where is it? So uh, let's uh, go. So as to be expected here, the M9 is really screaming through this quite quickly uh, with a very nice uh, frame rate here at 20, well 30, 47, up to 50 actually, uh, which is nice. It does get quite hot though whenever using these benchmarking apps. Probably going to do a thermal test here with the M9 very warm indeed on the iPhone we have a nice frame rate as well about 40s there which is nice considering the modest specifications so it looks like we are done here I'm not comparing these two by the way I'm just doing the speed test for those who are interested in like uh, the benchmark here and you can see you get some nice benchmark in there 49404 with the one M9 which is above the MX4 and the Note 4 which is nice And we are nearly there on the iPhone. So uh, we can see here that's a really good score four five uh, six six four on here, which is uh, very nice, assuming they use the same kind of methodology across platforms, then it's only like uh, about 3,000, 4,000 behind the M9. So, pretty nice result there, though. And uh, I think, uh, in conclusion, it looked like the uh, results were quite mixed, uh, so uh, not a huge real difference here. Uh, but uh, interesting nevertheless, so uh, yeah, I hope you uh, found this informative, uh, and uh, I will see you next time. Cheers.